So today I'm going to be talking about the book The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. Um, this book was actually originally written in 1994 and it was translated into English and pub republished in 2019. Um, I didn't actually know that when I started reading it. I kind of assumed it was a contemporary book, but um, I found out that it was originally written in the 90s. This is a really interesting book with a very unique premise. It is all kind of abstract and conceptual. Um, it's not rooted in anything very realistic, but this book takes place on an unnamed island. It is told from the point of view of an unnamed narrator. And on this island, things keep gradually disappearing. So one day you wake up and um, something that you've always known as part of your life is gone. For example, like birds disappear at one point. And when birds disappear, um, you no longer see them anymore and you can't even remember that they ever really existed. This, all of this is enforced by the memory police um, who are these kind of vicious, brutal figures um, who come into people's lives and destroy all the evidence that something ever existed. And there are a select group of people who are able to retain their memories even when things disappear. And so these people are targeted by the memory police and um, taken away. It's implied that they are um, killed or something terrible happens to them. Um, but so if you can retain your memories, even when things disappear, you are a target. So this story is, pulled from, is told from the point of view of the unnamed narrator. She is a novelist and her book editor is a man named R. R is one of the people that keeps his memories even when things are lost. And so the narrator figures out that she needs to help hide him or else he's going to be um, threatened by the memory police. So she comes up with a plan to keep R in a hidden room in her house and try to keep him safe there. And that's pretty much the whole plot. The narrator goes about her life trying to um, retain some normalcy and dignity um, in her life and trying to help R as much as she can. There's another central character um, who's only called the old man and he's kind of like a helpful friend to the narrator. He ha tries to help her and R um, stay safe and live the best life that they can in the face of these um, terrible circumstances. So I have noticed um, with the premise of this book addressing like censorship and um, authoritative figures sort of controlling and censoring people's lives and their thoughts. There has been um, some comparisons between this book and um, 19, on the back it, it compares it to 1984, Fahrenheit 451, um, books like that that are sort of um, dystopian novels about this horrible future society where humans are policed and controlled and our thoughts and memories are controlled by the government. Um, I don't personally see a lot of similarities between this book and those books um, besides the facts of the plot. This book is different from most dystopian novels. It's really not concerned with anything realistic and frightening as far as like something that could actually happen. It is more of a metaphorical book. It feels sort of like a fairy tale or like a fable at times. It's very symbolic and dreamy and abstract. It's really not trying to be like this realistic, intense, dystopian novel. So that is one thing to, to keep in mind when you're approaching this book, despite the comparisons to something like 1984, which is so concerned with the logistics of the situation. I mean, 1984 contains infinite details that, tr that make the the world seem real and realistic and like it's something that could actually happen. Memory Police is incredibly and very intentionally vague because it's supposed to be all very conceptual and all very abstract. So um, I don't personally see a lot of similarities. So if you are like looking for a 1984 type book, this might not have too much in common with it, but um, it is beautifully written. It, you know, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes when novels are translated. I wish that I could appreciate them the way they were originally written, but the translation of this book is at least very beautiful. It's very poetic. Um, the characters speak in poetry, basically. Um, they give these like long heartfelt monologues um, where they use a lot of metaphors 
and symbolic language. So it's, it's like I mentioned, it's really not meant to be realistic. There's not a lot of intense, realistic dialogue, but it's, it's very beautiful to read. There are a lot of interesting concepts in here as well. It really will make you think about memory and the importance of memory and you know what happens when we lose our memory do we lose ourselves do we lose our experiences um does something have value even if you can't remember it that's kind of one of the central questions here like do things need to be permanent in order to be valuable so i did really enjoy the questions that this book raised it's it's just really weird honestly it's a really weird book but i like things that are different and unique and this is definitely that there's just a lot of weird stuff in this book there's like a um <laughs> there's a book within a book that the narrator is working on and it's bizarre it's very strange and very creepy but it was so unique and original that i really like i have to give credit to this author um so i did really like this book it is intelligent, it's very well written, the plot is not action-packed, it's not um, any sort of realistic, um, gritty, dystopian tale, um, but it is really interesting and beautiful, and so for the artistry alone, I will definitely recommend this book. I definitely suggest checking it out if you're looking for something different and sort of dark and um, contemplative it is a good read. Um, so I would have to give it a 7 out of 10. It was very unique and so definitely check out The Memory Police.